Okay, here we go. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Wiley Allen, and what I'm going to be talking about in my 10 minute lecture is development of a story. So, first off, what is a story? Well, story actually consists of three main developmental areas. The first one is the plot. So the plot is the narrative that goes along with what you're trying to convey. The next part is the characters. Characters are the people or creatures, animals, or whatever happens to be in the story that is doing the actions throughout. The third part is the environment, and the environment is the background, the setting, the where the story is set to take place. Most stories involve a journey, and the journey usually follows a fairly, or roughly, line. First of all, you start out with your main character. Usually this person is a nobody, but it depends on where you are in the story. A sequel, that person would be known. But at the beginning of the storyline, they're probably just a nobody. As the story progresses, you will get to learn more about that nobody till they become a somebody. Usually they start out as an ordinary person. Or an ordinary character, nothing much to really be paid attention to. Most times on their journey, they have a quest or they have something that they need to do. And depending on how you're telling your story, they may choose to accept it or initially refuse it. This leads to the runaway. If they refuse to do it, is usually because of some inadequacy that they feel. They just don't feel that they're up to what they're being asked to do. Many times they will find a mentor, somebody with more experience, somebody who can encourage them to go along their way so the story can progress. The mentor will be by the main character's side through the majority of the story. As our character moves along, most times they will gain allies and or make enemies. This is a pivotal story twist because it introduces more new characters in besides the main character and the mentor who we have already met. These enemies will try their best to hinder our main character and the allies will do everything they can to assist that character in accomplishing their goal. Another twist that is often present is to overcome a fear. This can be a fear of inadequacy, be a fear of being overwhelmed, a fear of just, I'm not up to this, which may cause the main character to run away from the quest or the objective. In the end, uh, most times the hero, your hero or main character will achieve a victory, whether a personal one or against their enemies or against the obstacle that they are trying to overcome. And lastly, the closing of the story is usually that the main character returns back to their home. All right, now some things about stories is that a story has to be persuasive. It needs to be able to bring in the audience, which is us behind the fourth wall, into the story itself. We get invested in the characters. We get invested in the quest or the problem that needs to be solved. which is great because it does force the dropping of the fourth wall. Even if we as the audience don't realize it, we are pulled into the story.
pick places, uh, the environment that the character is in will dictate how the character is going to behave. If they are in a happy place, they will generally be happy. If they are in a not so happy place, they will generally be either feeling defeated or they will be feeling upset or a feeling of needing to escape that environment. One of the things that storytellers do is they like to idealize their environments and the climate that the characters are in. Hence, why heroes are generally placed in, you know, encouraging or peaceful or happy environments, and the not so uh, the anti-heroes are in much much darker places. This is also emphasized by the sets that we see in movies and plays and other uh, other forms of media. In the printed page, we imagine those environments by the descriptions that we see. Okay, environment also plays a pivotal role in translating from fantasy to reality. Most times when people read a story, they get so drawn into the story that it becomes an actual reality. They forget that they are reading or watching. They, f they forget about everything that's around them except what is in the story. This is a mark of very good storytelling. Okay, events are also told in real time. However, occasionally, a character may reflect back on old times. Things from the past that they bring up that are relevant to the current story being told. Now, in the modern world, uh, the increase of technology has changed storytelling quite a bit. Now, audiences are more looking for things that are experience driven, where they can actually participate in the story being told. This is proven by the rise of such things as uh, amusement park rides, which tell a micro story, but which the audience is actually immersed in. Okay, the one key part about ex an experience-driven story is that you, as the storyteller, have the ability to set the environment for the audience. This is very important because without the proper environment, your audience will quickly lose interest in the story. As I stated before, the... Uh, Inter interaction is now the key of modern storytelling. You want your audience to be in the story, if at all possible, whether by imagination or by actual physically immersing them into the story itself. Any questions? Oh, hang on. There we go. If you've got questions, uh, go ahead and unmute yourselves. So I personally hate the fourth wall a lot uh, and and do everything I can to tear it to shreds in whether it's a, a, a theatrical stage play or a magic performance. What techniques, tangibly speaking, uh, do you think are effective in uh, accomplishing that? Well, I, I would say that the uh, the first thing is to get into the audience's mind right off the bat, get them invested in the story, uh, get them invested in participating. And then you could uh, get that uh, going by using uh, physical means to get those audience members to uh, join 
join you on the quest, join you on the journey. Make it interesting enough that they want the hero or the main character to succeed. That's or you can what, make them the hero. What you've done here is an excellent summary of Joseph Campbell and the hero with a thousand faces mm -hmm. and the basic plot of base of most everything. Mm -hmm. And one thing he said that I never have gotten past is uh, shoot the p sheriff in the first paragraph. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, get the audience to hate the bad guy right away. Nice. <clears throat> All right, I'm going to stop recording.